Hello, in this video I am going to demonstrate for you how to use FRED. So let's go into our Canvas course and let's start with week one, welcome to economics. Scroll down until we get to the assignments and one of our assignments is week one exploring FRED worth five points. So we'll click on that. And the assignment directions say, answer the following questions based on the indicated data from the Federal Reserve Economic Data, or FRED, website. And so the instructions are here on what to do. This assignment is set up as a quiz. There will be five questions. Each question is worth uh, usually one point. And all of the questions are based on the tables, the data, um, the graphs that I'm going to show you how to access here. So let's start by clicking here to go to Fred. That will take us to this website. Now this is called Fred once again because it stands for the Federal Reserve Economic Data. We're going to be studying the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve Bank, the Federal Reserve System later on in this class. Uh, but this is their website where they have lots and lots and lots of data that economic economists use to study the economy. The next thing the directions say to do is to click on category under browse data by. So that would mean we want to go right here where it says category. We're really not going to need to, to click on any of these other icons. We're always going to be clicking on category. That takes us to this page with these categories, money, banking, and finance, population, employment, and labor markets, national accounts, production and business activity, prices, international data, US regional data, and academic data. Most of the uh, categories that we use will be the ones up towards the top, prices, production, national accounts, population, money, banking, and finance. So the directions then say in the population, employment, and labor markets category, click on population. So there's two ways to do this. This is the population, employment, labor market category. We can go right down here, this is the quickest way, and click on population. And we end up with this page, the population page. And you can scroll down and you can see that there's all different uh, sets of data. Each one of these is a different set of data. And I will specify which one of these sets of data under population that we want to use. Now let's go back to the previous page. Another way that we can do this other than just going directly to population is if you accidentally just click on the header. If you click on the category header, then it's going to take you to this page, and then you just have to go over here and click on population. So it's just one extra click, but it'll get you to the same page. Okay, back to the directions. Select annual, then click on population to obtain the population graph. So we're just going to be using the first uh, set of data here on population. It says click annual. Sometimes it won't specify, so don't bother clicking on anything. It may not or may, may or may not be important. So click on population. And what we obtain is a nice graph of population. So this graph is composed of a lot of data. I'm going to show you how to access that data. I'm going to show you how to manipulate this graph. But first of all, let's just know how to read the graph. First of all, as you run the cursor along the graph, you can see that it's giving you dates and population numbers. So February 1987, it appears that the population was 242,005. But that is incorrect because if you look up here, it says the units are in thousands. So I lost that one. So now in November of 1978, it says 223,585 thousands 
the units are in thousands. So what that means, to put it simply, is you take whatever number is here, 223585, multiply it by 1,000. When you multiply these numbers on this graph by 1,000, you basically get a million. So in November of 1978, the population of the United States was 223 million 585,000, right? So if we go to the most recent data that we have here, way up here, June of 2020, the population of the United States was 330 million 38,000. So that's how you read the data. You have to always be careful that you understand what the units are up here. For now, don't worry about whether it is seasonally or not seasonally adjusted. And the frequency here tells us that the data is monthly. I'm going to show you how to change that. So you can see that every month is on this graph. Let's say that's just too much information. We don't want monthly data. We can go over to edit graph, click on that. Then where it says monthly frequency, change it from monthly to annual. And make sure that this clicks to annual. And now it's telling you the aggregation method, average. What that means is it is taking the average of all the monthly population numbers for that particular year and averaging them. Right? You're averaging all of the population. So it's aggregating and obtaining the number through an averaging process. Click on the little X. And so now we look at the graph. We run the cursor over it. We see 1987, 1998, 1989, 90. So we just have one number for each year. We're still going from the same beginning point, which is approximately 1959 up until uh, 2000. This is only going to 2019 because we don't have complete data, of course, for 2020 yet. So this is how you can change um, from now from monthly to quarterly, semi-annually sometimes, or annually. Another thing that you need to be aware of on the graphs are these shaded regions. Okay, so there's a shaded region right in here and here. There's a lot of these shaded regions. If you go down here, it says the shading indicates U.S. recessions. The most recent one is ongoing. We are in a recession at this particular point in time, which is August of 2020. Um, so just be aware that we're going to be talking about what is a recession, what is an economic recession, but they're very, very important in the study of economics. If you want to know the exact dates of the beginning and end of each one of these shaded regions, you can just click down here where it's, and it will take you to another page where it says what dates are used for the recession bars. And so this will tell you the beginning and the end of every recession. So let's go to 2007 right here. This is telling me that the recession started in December, December 1st of 2007 and went to June 1st of 2009, at least as far as the graph is concerned. Um, there was another recession in 2001. In 2001, we had a recession that went from March 1st through November 1st. So that was a little bit shorter. So that means the it should be a little bit narrower on the graph. So let's take a look at that. Sir, this graph right here, which was in 2001 is much narrower than this graph here, which lasted a couple of years. So the width of these shaded regions will tell you the duration of the recession. All right, so there were a lot of recessions. All right, what else do we want to do with this graph? Here's another interesting thing. First of all, your questions um, on this are going to ask you to make some interpretations uh, about this graph. And Here's an interesting thing we can do. If we click on edit graph, we can change the units. What I like to do sometimes is change from the thousands to percent change. Percent change, and let's go to percent change from a year ago. So I'm gonna, so now the graph is going to show me percent change from a year ago. And look what happens to this graph. It looks completely different. 
And that's because it's not giving us total population numbers anymore, but it's telling us how the population changed. So as an example, in 1966, um, the population changed by 1.15914%. Now the number is positive, that means the population increased. Don't be fooled because this is decreasing here. You might be thinking, oh, the population is decreasing. Now the population is increasing. No, 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 no. That was the previous graph. This is telling you the percent change. And so the percent change is decreasing. So in 1963, the population grew Again, it's increasing because it's a positive percent, positive 1.45%. And then it grew by 1.38% in 64. In 65, it grew by 1.2. Notice the percent changes are getting smaller. Then when we get over here, the percent change will be increasing. Okay, It's always, the population is always increasing but the percent increase, the rate at which it is changing, is changing. And so that's how you read this. So back in 1960, we were growing a little over 2% a year. And if you look more recently, we're only growing by about a half a percent per year. The population of the United States on an annual basis is growing at approximately one half of 1%. And that is very important for economists to know. So these, again, are some of the things that I'm going to ask you to interpret um, in your uh, Exploring Fred quiz. So it's important that you understand how to read these graphs. Okay, one last thing. Uh, let's go back and change this to thousands again. So just click on thousands. And let's go back to uh, monthly data. And what I want to do, once this closes, is I want to show you how to download the data. So if we go up here to the download icon, click on it, and then click on Excel, it will download all the data in this graph on an Excel spreadsheet. Which is, So click down here. We can click on that, and it will open up the data population in thousands on a monthly basis. I'm going to show you how you can change the dates. You just want one year. We can click on 1Y and let's see how that changes the graph. All right. This is from uh, June 2019 up until February of 2020. What if we just want the last five years of data? We can click on 5Y and then it's going to give us five years worth of data, or we can go to 10 year or go back to the maximum amount of data. And we can, if we want specific dates, we can change the dates in these right here. So we can say, okay, we just want to go from Click on, oh, let's say from 1967, uh, September. And then we want to go to, oh, let's just say 2009, May. And so that's going to just take us from uh, October 67 to uh, whatever we said, May of 2009. So you can adjust the dates here. Lots of different things you can do this. Okay, here is our data that I lost before. And so it's going to label, it has it in an Excel spreadsheet. And we have the dates in this column and these are the populations. So it's going to be a long set of data. There may be some times when I ask you to work with this data to perhaps create some other graphs. Um, if you need to, you want to click on Enable Editing so that you can actually alter the graph. So that is how you use FRED. 
All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, you can contact me um, via email or you can see me during class. Have a good day.